TanaCon. That one convention that Tana had made, Tana Mongo has made, to try and give people the ability to do what VidCon can do, but for free. Fuck VidCon! Fuck anyone who created VidCon! I think all of the rebelled people and all of the unwanted people should host a little meet and greet in Anaheim, California on the same days as VidCon. I'd love to do it. It failed. I mean, it did like only get planned in a month. It, I guess, wasn't thought of still as much. A lot of YouTubers I have seen make these videos. Um, the ones I watched was Morgan Adams. If you want something to think about today, I think maybe we could all think a little more about how our actions and how our words affect other people. Just try, just try to be nice. <laughs> It's really not that hard. Shane Dawson, he has an incredible one on it, and his last part comes out Monday, which is when you guys are watching this. So if you guys haven't seen his channel yet, his so if you guys haven't seen Shane's TanaCon videos yet, just go to his channel and go watch it because I recommend it's amazing. PewDiePie has done it as well. We all know by now TanaCon was a disaster. It was a failure. And both Felix and Shane, I both agree kind of with them. I can see their points. And although I kind of got a little pissed. Well, like when, Tana, when TanaCon first came out, I thought it was fake. I thought she was just pranking. She was just joking around. And like it wasn't serious because I was like, what is Good Times? Like who is that? I've never heard of that plant. I'm not going to lie. I've never heard of Good Times before TanaCon. Yeah, I was just like, what, who is this? What? I I always didn't think Tana would purposely do this to hurt her fans. She has been through problems. She's had problematic issues. She's had this, she's done that. She's done so many things. But screwing over her fans, I feel like it's something she wouldn't do. Like, I know like people don't like Tana. People don't careful they don't like her they think she's all drama and like all that and like I personally I don't know I'm not gonna say I'm like obsessed with Tana but I don't hate her she seems pretty cool she has a good funniness <sighs> funniness she has a good humor she's pretty interesting to watch when I do watch her um now when I was watching Shane's videos I had a lot to see think about and say with Michael Weist the CEO of Good Times that's right that's the guy in charge the guy riding around on a Segway looking like he's 12 years old <laughs> I don't know what he is um when Shane first made it, I think it was his first part he seemed like he was a con man he seemed like he purposely messed this up to get more attention to him. Why were they filming the whole thing? Was the whole point of this to make a documentary and to sell it to Netflix or sell it to somebody and get promotion and make a doc? Like, it literally, right? That's what it sounds like. Why else would he? And all that. And then I think it was the second part. His, I have the clips part in this video. Michael Weiss seemed more like he was just, I don't know, like more of a kid. Like in the FaceTime call Shane had with Michael, um, like, what Shane said, he, he was a kid. It was just a kid on that camera. Like, he was upset. He was crying. He was worried it was going to ruin him. He was saying it was going to destroy him. He said it was going to destroy his life. It was going to destroy his career. And, like, I felt for him. Like, I risked it all to make this happen. My house, my car, everything. I'm going to lose everything. And then with Tana, she was crying. She was feeling bad. She she put the blame 100% on herself, by the way, which is good for her. I don't want to put the blame on anyone else. It's still my fucking fault. You know. I mean, I would say it's both their faults. Like, Tana could have done other stuff to be better. Like, she could have cared more about the convention instead of going off to, like, what they said, going off to Hawaii to go on a trip with Bella or, like, doing other things. She could have focused more on the convention if she wanted it to be more successful. Tana would basically give us all these things to deal with. I'm going to meet 5,000 people. How the fuck is Tana going to sit there and meet 5,000 people? But Tana would be like, the gift bag? It's gonna be four times what it is. The event's in two weeks, Tana. What? How are we gonna do that? I can't order products from China or here or where to get it into a goodie bag in time. 
I can't call a sponsor to give us that in a week. You can, Tana. Maybe you can call such and such and get free. They can put in every gift bag. Help us. Do you just tweet? We have to abide by it. Okay. That's not how business works. You know where Tana and mm -mm. are? At Studio 71 party. Yeah. But so could have Michael and have the good times, people. They could have too. They both could have done better to make this a better experience and a better time and do a better job at it. So I wouldn't say I want to put the... I'm more on Tiana's side. I kind of hope, like, when Shane releases the truth, which is his third part of to this, his little doco series that he's doing with TanaCon, I kind of hope that Tana didn't do anything bad because I am on her side. But also, at the same time, I'm on both sides. I'm on, like, I'm on this, well, like, to explain what I mean. I'm on the side where it's like, they both did something wrong. They both should admit it. They both should just say, we were 50-50 in this. And this was 50-50 our fault. And not blame any of the other ones. Or not call out any of the other ones. And just be like, and just have both of them just come out and say, hey, okay, I fucked up. Because you kind of did. You had people waiting for like four hours and probably more. I'm not sure. I think it was more than four, but I know four hours in the sun getting heavily sunburnt, really, really, really badly sunburnt, um, dehydrated, hungry. There was no food. There was no water. There was nothing. Like at least, and I think they took out water and it wasn't even that much. Like if there's not that much, if there's like that much people, like you should at least set it up beforehand like hey okay there's probably gonna be a long line well this, we said this account this place we said this convention was free it's right up the street from vidcon which is another something that could have been worked out more and it's still at the same time as vidcon so maybe we could have some little stations for water so people could go come and go and get some water if they need it maybe some snacks um maybe pass out snacks like i'm volunteered at conventions it has no um Hidden secret. I've done Walker Stalker like I think five times. I've walked with like six of their conventions, five or six of their conventions. And I remember one thing with Michael Cutlets back in San Francisco last April. April of 2017, I mean. He had a long line. It we, his line was like the only he was the only celebrity whose line was outside in the freezing cold way because it was San Francisco and it was near the water, so it was really cold out. And his line was super long. Well, not that long, but it was, like, pretty long. And he... My, my dog's barking. And Michael Cutlass went out of his way to just buy everyone in his line food. And, like, just have them eat while they're waiting in line to meet him. And just, like, it was not that hard. You could have at least... At least, like, when they saw that the line was building up, Tana and... Tana and Michael in good times. They could have ordered, like, something... During the day. Like, it wasn't like you could not order something during the day. Like, order water. Order food. At least, like, something to snack on. Something to eat. Like, maybe order some pizza and just hand it out to the crowd. And another big thing was the Tana's big thing on the number 15,000. 15,000 people. 15,000. 15,000 people. That 15,000. It's 15,000 people. 15,000. 15,000 people. 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 All 15,000 of you. I love you. I mean, when I first heard of what happened, I thought I saw 20,000, but then I started hearing more 15,000, and it's 15,000 this, 15,000 this. And it's like, does having 15,000 people at, like, waiting outside your convention that you made make you feel better about yourself? Because the video, that kind of showed that there wasn't 15,000 people at your convention waiting outside. It was more like 5,000, which, like, isn't that what the police statement said, too? 5,000 people? The police put out an official statement saying there was only 4,000 people outside. Just right now? Yes. I'm going to give you the exclusive statement that I got from the Garden Grove Police. There was approximately 4,000 to 5,000 people at most. There was not 20,000 people there. That means that there was 1,000 people inside, just like they said, and then 4,000 people would pay tickets outside. It wasn't 15,000. 15,000 would have been way more. The obsession Dana had with saying this. Um, like, no. Like, like, um, I think Felix made this out. 
pointing this out, but he was saying how it was like she got paid anytime she said the number 15,000. It's as if she would get paid every time she said it or something. I never seen anyone say anything so liberally. I could see because she said it so many times, no matter what. She kept saying 15,000, that exact number. And just like, are you really getting paid for just saying that you had 15,000 people waiting outside? I've never seen 15,000 people in my entire life, you know? Or does it just make, like, does the number just make her feel better about herself? I don't know. The world may never know. It's like one of like, it's one of the big conspiracy theories, which this probably is. This, well, this is technically, technically we are kind of living in a conspiracy theory with TanaCon, if you think about it. Like whose fault was it? Who did this? There's many theories for what, how it went wrong. And what kind of scares me is I actually considered buying a ticket to this. I actually considered, I was actually on the website looking through it and being like, hmm. I mean, the featured creator one that was free or a dollar or something was sold out. So, hmm. Maybe I should, like, I have enough. I Maybe I should get VIP. That'd be pretty cool. And then I can meet Shane. And I'm so glad I didn't. This is when, like, the time is great when I am broke. Thank you. Thank you. Now, this is the one time I was glad that I was broke because I'm so glad I didn't buy a ticket because watching all those people, all those, like, customers that they had, just, like, it made me so sad just watching them because, like, I know how it feels to travel for a convention. I've traveled to Walker Soccer. I went to, I've traveled to Chicago. I've traveled to Atlanta. I did Portland twice. So many. It takes so much money saving for, like, a lot of people just to get, like, the airline tickets, the hotel anything it's so much work and they just had to just and some people their money went down the drain like this was some people probably had like taken so long just to save up well like a month they probably had to like work extra like parents had to work so much to make their child happy and they come and they can't even go into the convention and and even the people who went into the convention weren't even like happy because it was just like one hallway like from like the pictures, from what I've seen on Twitter, it didn't even look like a convention. It just looked like an alleyway. There was nothing there. What? Like, isn't, like, I could be wrong about this. But the thing with conventions that you can do, can't you like rent out space to like vendors and like stuff? And they'll pay you to rent out your convention space? And you could make money off of them and they could come and they could give you stuff to do. I'm just saying. Like, like. Fuck VidCon! Fuck anyone who created VidCon! The whole idea behind it, I, I'm totally all behind. I don't like VidCon. I think it's nightmare. I think it's literally hell on earth and I wouldn't want to go there. And especially the fact that they don't pay anyone to go there. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. In particular, this video big thumbs up and if you like me just ranting about random things about what i thought and all that go hit that thumbs up button to let me know and i'll do more if i can if there's something that comes up that i could rant about possibly i wasn't gonna make this video but i had so many thoughts about TanaCon and like shane's video and felix's video had me doing it like i know i'm hopping a trend like everyone on youtube is talking about this but like, I just feel good, I'll put my two cents in it. No one's probably gonna watch this. I'll just be in the far back, just be like, zoop, zoop, zoop. And no one probably cares about my two cents, but like, I decided to make the video anyway, just do a little rants and stuff. So yeah, I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. It feels like the YouTube Rewind videos. It's not what YouTube is, it's what they want it to be. And VidCon is very, you know, they pick who they want to have as a featured creator because they don't want probably more controversial creators like Tana Mungo to attend their event. Which leads to her coming to the event and then fans swarming around her, which leads to safety issues and she gets kicked out. And apparently this happened year after year. She got fed up. Why can't I just get a featured creator pass? Because I want to meet my fans. So eventually she just got fed up and she said, okay, I'm going to make my own TanaCon. Fuck VidCon! Fuck anyone who created VidCon!